and I'm live. Hello, my friends. Welcome. I'm Alexandra. I'm founder of Life with Herpes. I've been talking about herpes publicly. Let's see. I get this straight. I've been talking publicly about herpes since 2017. So I am excited to be here with you. It looks like I have a messy background over there. It's birthday central at my house. My little boy is turning four. I was like literally just pregnant. I don't even know how that just happened because I was literally just pregnant. For those of you that are parents, you're like, we just had our child. How is my child having another birthday? At least that's how I feel. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> let's get back to life with herpes. I'm Alexandra. I'm founder of Life with Herpes. I'm really excited to be live with you. I don't know what's going on with my eyeshadow. It looks like I did it in the dark. Anyways, okay. <laughs> Um, this is your opportunity to ask your questions about herpes. I've been, like I, I've said, I've been public about this since 2017. The reason being, when I was diagnosed, it was extremely isolating, ostracizing, suffocating, terrifying. You're lonely. You're scared. You think that you have to stay with somebody that you don't have to stay with or that you're going to be single for your entire life. And... That's not at all true, right? Number one, there's a huge community. It's here. It's Life with Herpes, so you found it. <laughs> and two, it is my purpose to educate you. It's my purpose to bring information about herpes as well as get you through that healing phase. That's really my purpose right now this year is not so much the Herpes 101 where that is important, right? Let's learn about it. Let's learn about what herpes is, what herpes is not. We need to know these things, but I want to get you through your healing journey. I want to get you back to loving yourself. I want to get you back to who you really are and who you're meant to be. So get you to transform basically with a herpes diagnosis. Now that sounds absolutely mind-blowing and wild. Like, okay, Alexandra, I was just diagnosed with herpes girl, like I don't see the transformation, but let me tell you the transformation is 100%, 100% possible. I see it in my community. I see it in the life with herpes secret society, which is our online private community. I've seen it in myself. I've seen it with many other people. So let's get going. For those of you that have been live with me before, you know that I answer the questions in the order in which they're received. I do my best to answer them in the order in which they are received. Little uh, housekeeping items. Do your best to ask the questions in rated G form. No PG, no PG-13, no R, none of that. Let's keep it rated G. And um, yeah, I'll answer them in the order in which they are received. So let me go back. I saw that there were lots of questions here. Oh, and if you have somebody, like if you know somebody that has herpes, um, please share their information. Please share my information with them because it's something they need to hear. Let's... That's, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm talking about it. Also, this is the best lip balm ever. We created it. It was our first product that we came out with. It is the Lifesaver SPF Lip Balm. The life-changing right here because um, it has lysine in it. So if you have oral herpes, it's going to be really helpful for you because you can combat it orally or topically. Good afternoon. Hi, Samantha. We said good afternoon. I didn't want to hear that it was afternoon. I'm like, where did my morning go? I don't know where it went. I don't, I don't know. My daughter turned eight and I'm like, how? I know, right? I heard those um, sayings like, you know, the days are long and years are short. Yeah, days are long, years are short. Okay, any, um, any, any tips for constant outbreaks? Yes. Number one, there's a lot of things we can do for constant outbreaks. Number one, if you are wanting to take the antiviral, that's something that can be prescribed to you by your doctor. Um, you can take it and it should help with, the, with constant outbreaks or constant prodrome, which are the symptoms of outbreaks. So if that's something you wish to take or want to take, you can talk to your doctor about taking that. I personally do not take the antivirals as I take lysine, monolaurin, and geographis. I have the lysine, monolaurin combo pinned for you. This is what it is. So lysine, monolaurin combo. I take them separately so we can talk about everything here, okay? But what I have pinned for you is this, is the lysine, monolaurin combo. So first of all, lysine is an essential amino acid. It's a protein that helps block the replication of the virus. So 
What does that mean? It means that the, the HSV virus likes what this food, what this other protein called arginine. Arginine fuels the virus, it replicates the virus. Meanwhile, lysine is like the fire extinguisher for the, for the arginine, it doesn't like it. So it helps block the replication. So I take lysine daily, it's non-negotiable for me. I also take monolaurin and this is what it helps break down or disrupt or dissolve or whatever you want to call it, the outer layer of an enveloped virus. HSV is enveloped, which means it has a shell around it. So think of this bottle as an enveloped virus and the monolaurin helps disrupt that outer shell so our, our, our immune system can go in and penetrate it. So this right here is a combination. It's lysine, monolaurin, it's one-to-one. -one. So basically, I, I don't know why I take them separate. I just do. I don't know why. There, there's no reason for it. So basically, you get this with less swallows. Anyways, um, so that's what I have linked for you there. The third thing I take is Andrographis, which is right here. And that is um, sold out at the moment, but that's what I take also daily to help me fight the, the prodrome helped me fight, uh, just basically for me to keep my outbreaks at bay. So that's what I use internally, that's what I take instead of the, the antiviral. Again, if you wanna take the antiviral, great, that's totally your call. I just am at this point in my life that I no longer wanna take medication that I don't need. Um, topically, now if you're like, hey, let's do something topically. I created a Secret Society Wellness. It is a wellness foundation, a wellness uh, brand because we have herpes and we need something topical to put on it. And again, I didn't wanna be putting chemicals on my body. I didn't wanna be putting things that were um, no longer helpful, right? Or just, I didn't wanna be putting chemicals on my body. I really wanted things that were natural ingredients. This sells out every month. It's the Rescue Balm. It has peppermint, it has eucalyptus in it, and it is awesome. It has a nice little tingle to it. It helps with the pain, it helps with wound repair, it helps soothe. So this is something that sells out. This is something that you guys love. You guys use this all the time. And um, again, it sells out monthly. We also just launched, it is the uh, Herpes Fix It Salve. It is a salve, it's made up with Manuka honey, it's made up of frankincense essential oil. So it has anti-inflammatory product, uh, properties. It has antibacterial properties. It helps with the wound repair. It helps also with the viral, uh, fighting the virus. So it is amazing. And that is like, I was going to say something, but I want to get in trouble. It is, it is amazing. So I recommend those things. There's a bunch of things you can check out the website. It's linked in my bio. Um, first time customers get 10% off everything in there is awesome. So you cannot go wrong. Tips for repeated outbreaks. I just went over everything uh, internal that is linked. That doesn't help you. I have my lysine. I have right now, you know, you can get the monolore and lysine combo and the products. The third and final thing that I'm going to venture out on to discuss for, um, for helping with your outbreaks. And this is the one that's like the hardest one. It's the one that's like, ugh, yeah, right, Alexandra. It's the one that's like, no, I just want to take something. And I'm going to tell you that those things are all helpful and great. And I'm a big proponent. I still take my vitamins daily. I, my supplements daily. I use the, our wellness products daily. Um, but it's your mind and it is your nervous system and it is calming your nervous system. The HSV virus lives in our nerves. And so when we are in a fight or flight state, which means our nervous system is activated, when that happens, it's a perfect time. It's the perfect storm. That's when we're going to get outbreaks. So if we're living in that state, if you're living in this, like, you know, that anxiety, that like, oh my God, that state, that's when we are going to get outbreaks. So if we can learn to calm our nervous system, and this is really what I'm going to get into um, soon, and that's something I'm opening up about um, that I'm really working on, like things like tapping. If you guys are familiar with tapping, this is amazing. It's an amazing trick to help calm your body, help calm your nervous system naturally, opposed to turning to things like drugs, alcohol, or just living in a hyper state all the time. When we live in a fight or flight, it's going to begin to have a snowball effect on our, our bodies and on our life, our livelihood, I guess. Yeah. 
Um, and it's something that we don't notice because we're like, oh, I'm just go, 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 like Energizer Bunny. And, and you may think that that's a natural state to be in or something that's healthy for you to be in, but really it's a coping mechanism. You're either trying to avoid. Um, so fight, flight, or freeze. What happens when we're, thanks for the hearts, guys, because this is what I'm really passionate about. Obviously dealing with herpes and then of course ways to get us healing. So fight, flight, or freeze. Fight is, you literally want to fight. Like you are the person that is, I'm going to fight because I have herpes. I'm going to go fight the cause or I'm going to fight the person. Okay. That's the fight. Flight is like, whoop, I don't, I don't exist. I don't want to associate with having herpes. I'm going to numb my pain with drugs and alcohol. I can't deal with it. I'm going to, I'm in a flight phase or the freeze phase is when you're just like, I can't deal with this. I'm just going to go to work and do the bare minimum. And I'm not even going to, like, I'm not even going to open my curtains. I don't want to see the sunshine. I just want to be Eeyore and that's my life, right? So when we're in those, those phases, we don't realize that that's a coping mechanism. And what we want to do is get out of that. So back to your initial question, are you getting repeated outbreaks? Hey, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. And could be a number of things, could be diet, could be having too much arginine, could be, but mostly I'm going to tell you, well, it's stress. You're in fight or flight. You're in the hyper, the hyper state. So things like tapping. Okay. This is something that I've really been focusing on. And what it does is it calms our nervous system. It's easy. It's free. You can do it any time. All right. So you take two fingers or four, but two, and there's a, there's a pattern in which we're going to tap. And what this is going to do is it's going to naturally calm our nervous system. You can do this when you're in traffic and you're freaking out. You're like, oh my God, right? You can do it when you're all worked up. You can do it before you go to bed. You'll have the best night sleep ever. Um, you can do it while you're on an airplane. You can really do it anytime. You could do it while you're fighting with your spouse or your significant other. You can do it while you're stressed out. Maybe not do it while you're in a meeting with your boss. Your boss might be like, dude, you're kind of stressing me out. Like, what are you doing? But you can go back to your cubicle, or your, your office, and just like tap and calm your nervous system. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start up here above the eyebrow, and we're just going to tap. And I like to do it like 12 times. I don't know, two, eight counts. That's 16 times. So you can do it with me right now. So we tap and breathe in and feel it. And this is a great thing to do before, like when you have anxiety or when you're stressed out, when you're freaking out and like, just sit here and go, okay, start here. And then we're going to go to the side of the eye. And these are all meridian points. These are all meridian points that help um, calm our nervous system. So go to the side of the eye and then we go right here under the eye. Okay. Obviously don't poke your eye but go right here under your eye, all right? And we go above our lip. And I'm going quite hard. I'm going quite, I mean, it's something that I feel. It's not light. I am definitely tapping. Go right here on the chin. Guys, thank you for the hearts. I'll tap, I'll tap to the hearts, okay? Now we're gonna go right under, you can't see because I have a turtleneck on, but we're gonna go right under the clavicle right here. So. And this might be easier to use four fingers. And I definitely am using some force. You can hear it in my voice. Okay. And now let's go. I use my knuckles because I feel like this hurts. Ladies, and it's right where like your bra strap is. Men, it, it's kind of like here's my armpit and here's, I don't know, maybe like four fingers under your armpit. And hit here. Okay. Breathe in, feel if you need to breathe, that's gonna be really helpful, feel the breath. And then lastly, I like to use four fingers and tap right here at the top of your head. If you have babies or have had babies, it's where the soft spot would be on the babies. So tap here, okay? Now you're automatically right now gonna to start to feel calmer. You can do that three times. You can do it once, you can do it 10 times, you can do it for 10 minutes. It's, you can't do it wrong. You can go, oh, my right, I'm using my right hand. It's getting tired. I'm going to switch to my left hand. That's fine, right? There's no right or wrong. I'm going to go to my left side now, right? Oh, I'm going to go back over here to my right side. Oh, right. So however it works, I, I, a lot of times if my son can't sleep, I'll tap him and it'll go, he'll go to sleep a lot easier. So this is something that's basically a way to calm our nervous system. It's going to be so helpful in um, dealing with, well, again, when we're in a hyper state, we can't relax. Our body's like an alert. 
okay? And so it's gonna be hard for us to cope with our diagnosis. So use this in, the, in your back pocket. Um, guys, I see lots of follows. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I see the follows, thank you. Um, I'm going back to make sure I didn't miss any questions. Thank you for the shares. I appreciate that. How did you get it or transmit? Sorry, how did you get it? How did I get herpes? I got HSV-1 because my date kissed me goodnight. He had an active cold sore and he kissed me goodnight. Um, that was awesome. I was like, <laughs> and got pinned up against the door. Okay, that happened at 20. And then I got genital HSV-2 from a boyfriend who didn't know that he had it. So um, he didn't know that he had it. And then a few weeks later, I had it. Yay. <laughs> so that's how I got it. Um, I have that. Any other tips? Did I answer your question about ways to help with the outbreaks? We talked about, we talked about, about or antivirals. We talked about, um, you know, we talked about monolaurin and lysine supplements. We talked about the Secret Society wellness products. We talked about these, and then we just talked about ways to calm your nervous system. So those are four ways that we can use to help with our outbreaks. Thanks for all your information. You're welcome. If you were barely diagnosed, it's been three to four months without symptoms, can you kiss your partner? Yes, of course. Here's the thing. Um, can you kiss your partner? All right. Where do you have herpes? That's a great question to start, because a lot of times we think that when we're diagnosed with herpes, we think we're an, our entire body is contagious, and that's not accurate. Okay, so if you have oral herpes, the area in which you're contagious is your mouth, the, the oral area. You're not contagious down there, you're not contagious on your armpit, you're not contagious on your elbow, you're contagious around your mouth. So the rest of your body is not like contagious. Vice versa, if you have it down there, that area is contagious, not your mouth, not your ear, not your elbow, not your foot, right? So, um, it sounds like you ha may have oral herpes. Yes, you can kiss people. Here's the thing though, okay? Use, I wanna say this with a little asterisk, a little disclosure, um, and it may go against the grain of what you would read on the CDC. It may go against the grain of what you've been told and things like that. I want you to live life normally. I live life normally. I kiss my husband. I kiss my child. I don't kiss other people. <laughs> like, do I kiss? I don't. Um, <laughs> But, but can I transmit herpes to my husband and to my child? Yes. Are they aware of that? Yes. Well, my son isn't because he's three. But um, yes. I feel like I would be doing a disservice to my relationship with my husband, a disservice as a mother to not kiss my child, to not share a fork with my child, to not share a bite of ice cream with my son, to not kiss my husband, to not do those things that are absolutely normal that you do with the people that you love. Can I transmit herpes? Yes, when I have an active outbreak, absolutely. Can I transmit herpes without an active outbreak? Yes, due to viral shedding. The virus can shed asymptomatically, unbeknownst to me, unbeknownst to people that are hosts to this virus. And yes, we can shed it, we can share it, we can transmit it unknowingly. But again, I feel like if I had any sign or symptom, I of course would back away. I feel like it's more important for me to kiss and share. With that being said, uh, Fabio, I want you to take this with a grain of salt and decide what feels right for you in your relationship with your partner. How can I buy this stuff? The supplements are linked or they're in the shop and then the Secret Society Wellness are all linked for you in my bio and you can check them out. Um, it's, it's Lana. I haven't seen your question come across. So if you could ask it again, what's the pin bottle of just join? So the pin bottle is a uh, monolorn and lysine. These are two supplements that can be really beneficial with the HSV virus. Lysine is an essential amino acid. It's a protein that helps block the replication of the virus and monolorin helps dissolve the outer shell of enveloped viruses and, and monolorin is, or lysine. <laughs> HSV is an enveloped virus, which means it has an outer shell and our immune system can't penetrate it. So taking these, these supplements are gonna be really helpful in dealing with um, fighting the virus internally and naturally. 
Do I believe in herbs that can cure herpes or is that stuff just getting your money? Here's what I believe. I believe that there is some sort of cure for herpes out there. I have zero doubt. I like to joke like it's probably on the fir- the third full moon of the fifth year with with a teardrop from a goat and hair of a bat and hoof of a goat and uh, uh, put in a frog and drink the nectar on the blue moon. I'm sure that there's something out there with medicine men and medicine women and shaman in the Amazon. Zero doubt. Okay. However, I don't have that recipe and I don't know what it is. I also have 100% belief that what we consume, what we are, what we consume, the foods we eat, have a huge impact on our health and have a huge impact on, on our ability to fight other viruses. So that's why supplements are important to me. That's why what I eat, is it clean? Is it healthy? That's important to me. Um, are there certain supplements out there that are, that are going to be helpful for this HSV virus? Absolutely. But I also feel that a lot of it is like we were talking about tapping, okay, calming your nervous system. I think all of these things are also really helpful. So are, is there something out there that can help with herpes? I'm sure there is. I just don't know what it is, right? Um, so I would say do what you want um, and see what happens I, if, if you want to. I, I'm, I, I think that if there was truly something out there right now, there would be a lot of, um, we would know more about it, I guess. Um, but of course, you know, we also know why the information's not out there. So I have to be careful how I say this, if you know what I mean. Um, but anyways, I would, I would trust your gut on that one. And, and what I do know that helps, I can say this, there are proven things that help with lysine and monolaurin and angiographis, which is out of stock right now, but angiographis, these are all things that are really, 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 really helpful. You know, another thing that has incredible supplements, Um, it has ingredients in it that is really helpful for herpes as well is uh, biofilm. Let me add the product. Okay, look at me go with my store. It's new to me. Biofilm has, so if you've seen some of those things on like Instagram or Facebook talking about certain supplements that will get rid of your herpes, um, this actually contains two of the three ingredients in there. So this is really helpful as well. So it's an immune support, it's um, digestive health, it's all goodness right here. Um, That's linked for you as well. What are the symptoms of herpes? So I would say if you have blisters, obviously, um, but it can be swollen lymph nodes, it can be flu-like symptoms, it can be nerve pain, it can be itchy, it can be tingly, those can all be symptoms. It's called prodrome, those can all be symptoms of it. Um, I think I just... Explain what the pin bottle helps with. Why are you ignoring people's questions? It's, Lana, I don't see your question. How the heck can I order the lip balm? It's linked for you in the bio. It's the bomb.com. Bomb.com. Pay attention to people asking questions. Guys, I'm trying to read them. Also answer your question, each person's question. Does a negative blood test mean you don't have herpes since there are no antibodies? So correct. Again, ask your doctor, but it would if your test comes back negative for antibodies, it would mean that you're negative for herpes. Now, if you've had a blister, there might be an evoquivocal response there. You might want to get tested again. If you, um, if you have a partner that has herpes, you might want to continue to get tested. How long was I with my partner after I got herpes? I stayed with him for two years. Um, and that was because I didn't have the emotional, I wasn't strong enough to move on. I was scared to move on. Can you please explain what bottles you are selling and used for? Okay. So the lysine is an essential amino acid. It's a protein that helps block the replication of the herpes virus. Uh, the lysine right now is sold out, but I like to use, you can also use lysine monolaurin together. It's basically the same thing, less swallows. Monolaurin is lauric acid that helps, um, it helps dissolve the outer layer of an enveloped virus. HSV is an enveloped virus, which means it has a shell around it, so our immune system can't penetrate it. Um, so this is something that, these are, I take these daily, they're non-negotiables in my herpes arsenal, and um they're amazing. The next thing that I was talking about is a biofilm and it, in, 
it 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 blah, blah, blah. where did it go um biofilm includes some really potent ingredients as well there's antioxidant there, but there's botanicals and there's things to help with immune support. And there's some ingredients, two ingredients specifically that are really, really helpful with herpes in here as well. So that's that. Lip balm linked in the bio. How long did we say? I said two years. If you have symptoms, is it contagious? Yes. When you have herpes symptoms, you are contagious. Absolutely. Outbreaks can happen anytime. There's, um, unfortunately, yeah, there's no like there's no like recipe or like there's no like map of like, oh, you had you had one this week, so you're gonna be good to go for five weeks. No, it, it basically pops up when your immune system is compromised or when you're under a lot of emotional stress. Um, would I would think it's safer to avoid doing those things to prevent your baby from getting it. Absolutely, and that's a lot of that's what some people believe as well, and that's what that's what some people choose to do with their children or or whatever. I feel like it's going to be more detrimental to my child to not share things and kiss and be be in that lovable mothering sense and to be very standoffish from him and like not share and not and not have skin to skin and not do those bonding things. I think is going to be a. a emotionally a bigger deal for him. So like, I don't want to push my son away or be like a, a wall to my son, right? And so my son can pick up herpes anyway, anywhere. He's exposed to it, not just from me, but from other people, other people in our family, other people, like two out of three people have HSV-1 and he has three teachers. So statistically, you know, one of the teachers he's with has it, at least one, right? So he's exposed to it. I got it from um, I got it from HSV one. I got it from kissing. Well, somebody kissed me with a cold sore, and HSV two, um, a boyfriend that didn't know we had it. Are you scared you could possibly give it to your child? Yeah, of course. It's something that crosses my mind. But again, the thought of not being doing my natural mothering instincts, I think, is going to be more harsh for him. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to say. Was it an internal outbreak? So internal, so so some women will experience internal outbreaks. So inside the vagina, they'll experience outbreaks and, or on the cervix. A lot of times um, they don't know that they're having it because our nerves are different around that area than they are on the exterior of our skin or exterior of our body. And so, um, yeah, that can happen internally. Oops. What's an internal? So yeah, internal would be like internal on the cervix. Um, what does it feel like? I'm not sure. I don't. I don't experience those. I've heard from women. Some people experience. Like, can feel them, and some women can't. So someone's saying they had an outbreak on, on her leg. Um, does it your leg randomly shed? Yeah, the area in which you have herpes, will that's where the virus will shed. Does it work for HPV? HPV and HSV are two different types of viruses. Human papillomavirus is HSV and, and is, human papillomavirus is HPV and HSV is herpes simplex virus. Someone's asking what they what via, what they feel like internally because she's had no outbreaks. It could be an internal outbreak. We don't know. Did my boyfriend with HSV do have any symptoms? He said he didn't. I don't know. Um, he said he didn't, but I don't know, right? Um. <laughs> That's funny. You have to cut off your leg, right? Um, can you legally get in trouble if you don't tell someone uh, you're going to mess with them? Um, that's going to be each individual state is going to have different laws on that, each different country. Personally, I would say that it's a personal moral compass. Um, I would say that if you're not going to disclose to somebody, I mean, you'd have to say, would you want to know that? Would you want, like, put yourself on the other, put your, 
put the shoe on the other foot. Um, would you want to know? Um, would you want to know if your if your partner has herpes and you're sleeping with them? That's that's how I look at it. I personally would say that it's probably not good karma to intentionally not disclose. It's on. I'm not. Ex I'm not ignoring you. I don't see any of your questions. I see that you've asked him three times, but I don't see your question. It's maybe the app is blocking it. I don't. But I don't see them. Maybe you see them, but they're not showing up for me. Um, best treatment to remove them. Unfortunately, you cannot remove herpes. It's something you have the, for your life. It's a virus, but you can do some things like take some supplements that I have linked for you. Um, you can do things topically like the rescue bomb. There's other things from the secret society wellness that you can use as well as learning to calm your nervous system. Have you given it to anybody? No, I've not given it to anybody that I know of. So I've not given it to anybody. Is there any difference between HSV1 and HSV2? Technically, yes, the viral DNA is different, but um, they do the same things and act the same way and both cause outbreaks. Um, typically, HSV1 is less frequent. HSV2 is typically more frequent. HSV1 is typically oral, but it can be oral or genital. HSV2 is typically genital, but can it be oral as well. Can you spread it even when using protection? Unfortunately, you can still transmit it because the protection may not cover the area in which that you have it. So for myself, as an example, I have it on my tailbone. My husband and I could use protection all we want. My tailbone is still exposed. I don't take antivirals, um, but that's something that will help lessen the transmission. It helps lessen the transmission by 48%. Um, Yes, you can take lysine to avoid using outbreaks. Um, the best way to protect partners is number one, obviously avoid contact if you have an outbreak. Number two, um, if you wanna take the antiviral, lessens the transmission rate by 48%. Number three, obviously use protection, but the most important thing is to communicate with your partner and be on the same page. Does your partner feel comfortable with this? What do you guys wanna to do to prevent transmission? Um, just because you have a one-time conversation with your partner doesn't, it, it doesn't stop there. You're going to continue to have multiple conversations about it. Yes, cold sores are herpes. I see that someone, Hannah, responded to It's Lana. Yes, you can. So I'm glad. It's Lana, I just don't see your question. I don't know why it's being blocked for me. Um, all right, friends. Thank you for joining me. I think we got everybody's question. What was... My husband's response when I first told him, um, well, when I first told him we were not dating, we were not together, we were colleagues. So he was like pissed that the person I was dating, like he was pissed about it. Um, but then when we started dating, fast forward to many years later, we started dating. He was like, I love you. I want to be part of you. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So that was his response to it. All right, my friends, I hope you have... A wonderful day. Did I get them as a child? No, I did not get them as a child. All right, guys. Thank you for the follows. Thank you for the shares. Sorry, Lana, that I was unable to answer your question. They just never showed up for me. I don't know why they didn't, but I never got your questions. All right. Have a great day, everybody.